Hi, this is Abdul Bharti and we are here at Oracle Open World Conference in San Francisco and today we have with us once again Wim Cockert. Uh, you don't need any introduction so I will not even bother to introduce you. Okay. Uh, you. Let's talk about something uh, related to Linux. You know, any announcements coming out today? Yeah, so today at Open World um, we're going to announce what we call Autonomous Linux. And it's a very exciting announcement because for, from a Linux point of view, um, Oracle Linux was announced in 2006. And then we had an announcement around virtualization 2007. We announced something called the Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel in 2010. And then today we're announcing Autonomous Linux, which is sort of the next generation of what we're doing on an operating system on the Linux side. And so the genesis of that is really Autonomous Database, right? So the last two years we've, we've uh, released the Autonomous Database, as you know, many people are aware of. And part of what we do there is we take away the mundane tasks of DBAs and admins, patch the database, make sure it's secure, do upgrades for you. Um, even within the database, we create indexes for you as a developer. You don't even need to know, you know how to optimize that stuff. We do automate optimizations for you. We scale for you and stuff like that. Now, what a lot of people don't necessarily realize is that underneath the database software, you have an operating system, which is Oracle Linux in Autonomous Database. So for that stack, we do the same thing. For the service, the Autonomous Database service, we patch online, we, we make sure it's secure, we do tuning and everything else. But the customer doesn't see that because we do it automatically. And so one of the things we realized was Autonomous Database is very successful. Developers love it because they don't have to worry about it. It's like, well, if you want to write your own service, then that, that OS piece is still something you could depend on coming from us. And so Autonomous Linux is basically taking that layer from the Autonomous Database, making that available to everyone. So as a, as a sysadmin or a developer, you push a button and we provision the OS for you in a VM or a bare metal server, and we do the patching. Online patching with case supplies so you don't have to reboot your system. We online update user space libraries so you're always secure and you don't have to type any commands. And one of the things that, um, that I hope is going to be useful for developers is when you, look, when you think about, for instance, microservices, right, which is very popular de uh, development and de deployment model these days. So when you deploy a service, microservice does not mean it's short-lived. It typically means you deconstruct a big problem into smaller pieces and you separate them out and you run them. Now, when something is running, it could run for days, weeks, or months. Well, there's security vulnerabilities that pop up anyway. So do you have to bring it down, patch it, and bring it back up? Well, in the, if it's just an operating system thing with autonomous links, you don't have to do that. So if you build microservices or traditional application deployments with this model, then it's, you, you start it up and you're always current. The first time you deploy something, two months from now, six months from now, you're still current with patches. So we take all that away from people and we do the tuning. Uh, one example of tuning would be, let's say you're, um, um, you know, certain network traffic where you're doing internet traffic and they're large packages. Well, in the Linux kernel, you have um, different congestion algorithms for TCP IP. And one of them is BBR, which is optimized for large inter internet traffic uh, packets. And so the service detects what type of network traffic is happening on your operating system image. And then we can send a message to the kernel saying, change the network congestion algorithm to BBR. Or there's a certain disk IO pattern that happens in that particular instance. So we can dynamically tune each given operating system instance based on the workload it's running. You don't have to do it as an app developer because a Java developer, you know, they know they're really good at Java, but they might not be OS experts and they certainly might not be kernel experts to do tuning. And so if they have to depend on someone else, when th then there's a latency, a lag in terms of responses. So if we do automation on that stuff, it solves their problem like we do with, you, with the database. So that's Autonomous Linux and we're, announced, we're launching that today. So is it... Uh Another member of Oracle Linux family, or is just you know evolution of Oracle Linux? It's so Oracle Linux is the base for autonomous mm -hmm. Linux, and just like with autonomous database, you have the Oracle database engine, and then that plus all the stuff around it makes it the autonomous database. And the same with autonomous Linux, you have Oracle Linux, the core stuff, the binaries, the kernel, and then all the automation around it that makes it autonomous Linux. So it's basically it's based on Oracle Linux. Right. Yeah. You mentioned you know fine tuning. So do you work? I mean. Do, 
work with the particular customer or it's like you know there are some you know buttons and knobs they have or you fine tune them it's 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 automatic fine tuning right okay. so so basically depending on the workload yeah, depending on the workload and we we basically get logs we get telemetry data from running systems and then we do machine learning out we run machine learning algorithms on this and then can see certain patterns and then send commands back to the operating system to optimize it and what are the typical use cases that you're seeing for autonomous like in the market everybody or yeah, pretty much everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, because if you think about it, the security um, patches are typically installed every three or six months in companies, right? And so when you talk to the sales admin, they don't really want to do it that way, but they have to go and, and basically do project management. Mm -hmm. They have to go to all the app owners and say, hey, can I bring your system down Friday at 5 p.m.? No, we, we don't want you to do that. Okay, then I can patch it so you're not secure. Well, maybe in two weeks or whatever it is. So you always have this latency there and, and that leaves the vulnerability unfixed. And so by, by making sure we test the patches right and being able to do it online, the admin doesn't have to worry about this and just let the system run and we take care of it for you. So it, it helps sysadmins to focus on higher level stuff, mm -hmm. okay. add patches, make sure that, add packages, not patches, that, that a certain application owner wants or um, look at a new version and see what's new in there rather than just doing package installs and, and testing and bringing things down and back up. Does it also handle the, the major releases and upgrade also? No, not major releases. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that model too, but it's, so basically when you run Oracle Linux 7, it's, it's all the updates and patching for that, okay. for that release. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, I heard something about free tier. What is yeah. that? So the, the free tier for Oracle Cloud is, is another announcement we have today. And that one's also, of course, very exciting. So uh, anyone that signs up for an Oracle Cloud account starting today, gets two VMs, it's a, we call them micro instances, one eight of a core with one gigabyte of memory, two each, um, and two databases, two autonomous database instances, one Oracle Core plus Oracle CPU, plus um, 20 gigabytes of, of database free space, a load balancer, uh, which is like a 10 megabit load balancer, um, 10 gigabytes of object storage, 10 gigabytes of archive storage, and the VMs have a 50 gigabyte disk, each of them. And that's free, and not just free for three months, not free for one year, free for as long as you want to use them. So any developer, any user can sign up, gets this. It's a standard Oracle Cloud account, so if you want more, well, you have your, you have your credit card, which you, know, which, which you use to sign up. And if you use more, then we charge you for the other stuff, but this is free. And if you look at other cloud vendors, they have, typically have like a free tier for 12-month for trials. This is not a trial, this is a free account or free services part of the account. And they're usable services. VMs and databases are very usable services, right? What you typically see somewhere else is a, a free service for something new that they want to promote, but not the core. And so it, I think it's going to be very, um, very useful and, and attractive for developers out there. So are you reacting to the market or you're trying to differentiate yourself or you're like, you know, I think developers do need access to it, so let's do that. What is the It's driver? a combination uh, in, Both. in all cases because we want to attract more and more developers, right? And one of the advantages that we have with Oracle has a very diverse portfolio of things, right? From high level fusion applications and um, you know, fusion analytics and database, and then, then, of course, operating systems and the infrastructure itself, and then we have Java and, and Graal, and we have all the business units. So we have this diverse portfolio of stuff. And so it's very hard for any given person to know what we do. By creating something like a free tier where people can come and they play with this stuff, since it's a standard Oracle Cloud account, when they're looking around, they see all the other things we have as well. They might look at it and say, oh, I want to try this out. So it gives us an, a very easy way to expose our technology to people. The other thing is that we, we, um, we can create bundles, like we have the Oracle Linux cloud developer image, which has all the languages installed and all the libraries to make it easy to create an application against a database or something like that. So people click one button and they get that full developer environment. So it makes it a lot easier to get started. And with free trials, what we've seen is that Folks get busy and then they go away. By having a, a free tier that stays around, it kind of creates a relationship for the long term with, with us and, and uh, the developer or the user. 
right? So it, it really helps expose their stuff, but it also helps keep them engaged for a long period of time. And uh, first of all, what is the regional availability? Is like only in the US or globally? Yeah, global. Globally. Mm -hmm. Second is, can they bring their own workloads application also on the, uh, or only? Yeah, so, or well, I mean, it's a VM, so you, you can do whatever Oracle, you want. Yeah, you, okay. get, you install your app on it. You, uh, I mean, technically, you, you get a load balancer, you, you could create two, web servers and then a database app in the okay. back end. You so it's not tied to Oracle. Yeah. People can it's come no. and play with it the way yeah. you want. You can run okay. your own apps on it and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at all these you know, things, you know, in early days when we look at Oracle, it was just database, right? Mm -hmm. I was here last year also in the Groundbreaker Hub and there's so many exciting things are happening. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned just a few things. Just the two things. First of all, what all Oracle does. Mm. Of course, we cannot cover that yeah. in this interview. Yeah, yeah. But when you look at the developers community, which are touching everything, you know, some are working only on the database, some are only work. How do you bring them together or enable them to be, you know, cross pollinate or use it? Yeah. So a, a few things. You know, one is we're we're doing a more concerted effort, I believe, in in going to developers and and really explaining the the breadth of stuff. And what typically happens is a Java developer talks to the Java development team. So they know what's happening in that world, but then they don't necessarily know what's happening somewhere else. And so by, by having sort of everyone bring the global message of we're doing, you know, we have high level development tools, for instance, Visual Builder. Visual Builder is a web-based application development tool. You can say it's low code. You, you create business objects, you, you create widgets, and you attach them to the objects and you have a form in 10 seconds. Right, and then you push a button. It, it excuse me, it generates a uh, a progressive web app for your mobile phone. You don't have to upload it to the store. You get a, a QR code out of the box. So that's used primarily for Fusion applications extensions, but anyone can use it for their own for their own web applications. Right. So it's a very high level. It generates no JS code. So you can download the code and run it on your own web server. So we do stuff like that. Then, of course, we have Application Express on the database side, which is an incredibly powerful and, and widely known tool for writing database apps, web-based. Right? And then, of course, you can do SQL. Uh, you can have you know, Python code or Java code. We've been working um, with developers to understand what the, the friction sometimes is. And, and one example is we used to ask people to download a, a library to connect to the database instead of just having it shipped with Python or something like that. Well, but now we just distribute it on, in Docker instance, in Docker Hub or the Oracle Container Registry, or we have it embedded in, in, uh, in Python libraries. So as a developer, you just pull your code and you run it. And in the past, it would be you do your thing, you then have to download something with a web browser and install it. Well, they don't want to do that. Right, so we've really been looking at what can we do to optimize developer efficiently, efficiency. Mm -hmm. And so that has been uh, very attractive for people. So that's sort of what I'm trying to do at, at Open World more this mm -hmm. year, and, and you'll see more people do that. All right. So if you look at the, the evolution of Oracle, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. what are the new either technologies or emerging technologies of buzzwords or mm -hmm. that you are personally interested in? Hey, you know, this is something that we should tackle. There's a, well, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> let's see. One, one thing that I, that I find, so Java 13 is uh, being released. And you know, the, the model of having preview features in Java so that everyone in the community that, that installed Java 13 gets to play with, with you know, early versions of, of new, new functionality rather than, if you see the, the thing here that's interesting is typically people download a beta version of something and then play with that. But the number of folks that are willing to have two installs of a product, one that they use for the real world and one that they use for beta is relatively small. By having new versions with preview code in it, basically gives that access to everyone, right? And so I think that, that's going to be uh, very useful. The other one is Growl VM, right? Growl is a, a very popular technology, native image compilation, so you can take your Java code and it generates a binary. Really useful. And, and the more you see things like functions happen, right? Oracle functions where you want to execute something in you know, one second or half a second and thousands or tens of thousands of times, um, native image really helps with that. So anything that's short-lived or you need to improve the, the startup time for your application when it comes from Java, this is a really great technology. So that's, um, we talk a lot about that here at the show. It's really, uh, really powerful. Anything around cloud native, 
the work around Kubernetes. We, we are uh, announcing on the Linux side, we, we, we create a, a, an installer and an upgrade tool for Kubernetes. So you create a YAML file with the components, the modules you want, and it will take care of the dependencies. And when there's new updates, it will take care of that for you. So that's something that, that, uh, that's going to be very useful for, for the Kubernetes uh, crowd. So there's a lot of these technologies that I think now are coming together. And having Oracle Cloud and having this free tier will allow us to, to expose that more easily to, to uh, developers. Because we can just create these stacks and make them available. So if you look at Oracle today, what, I mean, in early days, it's very easy to say a database company. What kind of company is it today? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're everywhere, right? We, we have uh, an incredible good fusion applications business and in all this space. And of course, the database is, is a, you know, unsurpassed piece of technology. Uh, there's so much new stuff on the database side that we're announcing this week as well. The cloud, our cloud is evolving, Oracle Cloud itself. There's so many new services that we're introducing. Um, it just all comes together. Right? And, and you, you can see how developers, nobody is installing anyone, anything anymore. Yeah. It's really about, you tie services together. Nobody's running the software, you know? No, it's, yeah. just, it's a service you talk to, and uh, it's great for us. Before we wrap this up, today is Larry's keynote. What are you excited about his keynote? What are anything specific other than these announcements? Um, well, it's always great to hear him talk because his keynotes present the uh, the roadmap and uh, philosophy on, behind the company, right? And so, both for Oracle employees as well as customers and partners, it's just always very exciting to uh, to hear him talk. And uh, of course. You know, with autonomous Linux in there, there's a lot of announcements that are coming from my team. So, you know, I'm obviously proud of the work done by that group and, and the rest of the company. So it's, it's always very exciting. Thank you, Vim, so much for talking to me today. And as usual, I look forward to talking to you again in the right. future. Thank you. All right, thank you.